So I just want to talk about some, uh, some slight variants uh, of the KKT conditions. So um, generalization and a few specific cases uh, of the KKT um, and how you can actually use it in other contexts. So remember that, um, you know, again, here are our KKT conditions and a couple of different situations in which we can apply them. So we've talked a lot about um, cases where we have constraints uh, and we have inequality constraints, right? So where the, um, uh, my function is defined on some set uh, where these uh, constraints are less than or equal to zero. My GIs are less than or equal to zero. Um, and so I, you know, the, solution, the, the optimal solution can be on the boundary or it can be in the interior uh, of this set. Um, keep in mind that if you want to, um, if you wanted to just look at equality constraints, so where your, your set was just the boundary uh, of some region, then you can cast that into the form uh, of the KKT just by saying, you know, if I have these um, constraints uh, where uh, LJ of X is equal to zero, then I can uh, cast those as inequality constraints by saying that LJ of X is less than or equal to zero and negative LJ of X has got to be less than or equal to zero as well. So the only way that you can satisfy both of those uh, is if all of the LJ X's are equal uh, to zero. And so then you have put your, um, uh, you've put your problem into exactly just the form um, that's appropriate for using KKT, and so you can essentially plug and play. So here's what um, KKT conditions would look like. So the first two terms there are just exactly what we've had before. This is in KKT1, so we've got our Lagrange uh, multipliers times there, and you know, these might be, um, these are our inequality constraints here. And then for the, um, uh, for the equality constraints, we just introduced two new, two new terms here, um, yeah, um, and then the whole thing's got to be equal to zero, and the whole thing goes through exactly the same. I mean, you can simplify this a little bit further. Uh, you can define a new uh, mu j, which is uh, mu j plus, take away mu j minus, um, and then you can uh, write this in a slightly more compact form. But essentially, um, the whole thing works the, works the same. So you can do KKT uh, where you have a mixture of equality constraints and inequality constraints. It works uh, absolutely fine. Uh, the next thing um, is, um, you know, everything we've talked about has been, has had this pretty big assumption uh, that everything is convex, right? So that um, uh, all of my constraints uh, need to be, uh, need to be uh, non-convex. Um, so here uh, is a version of KKT that looks exactly the same as what we had before, except now I'm just saying that let's let F uh, and GI be continuously differentiable full stop. So before, in our, uh, the version that we proved uh, everything, uh, this was continuously differentiable and convex. And so the theorem looks the same, except that I have this new point here, let X star be a regular point in a local minimizer of F of X. Um, and so the question is, you know, I've introduced a new piece of notation there, um, that X star is a regular point, everything else looks the same here. I've got my um, KKT1, uh, I've got my uh, complementary slackness. I've got this condition um, that all my Lagrange multipliers are positive or equal to zero. I just have that X star is this new term, a regular point. What does that mean? Uh, it means this. So if a point is, if X is a regular point, it means that the gradient, uh, the gradients of my, all my constraint functions at that point, right? So the set of all vectors that are all the gradients of all of the um, of the cons uh, uh, gradients of all of my constraints, they've got to be li linearly independent. So, so long as every, uh, uh, at my, um, uh, my minimizer point, my x star, uh, if the gradients of all of my g's are linearly independent, I can't write one as a linear combination of each other, then I can actually do KKT uh, with non-convex functions. So actually, you know, the theorem is actually more general than what we've talked about. We're focused on convex functions just because it's easier to prove things uh, using convex function, but you should know that the, the theorem is actually more general. So, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about KKT because in the real world it's actually quite powerful, right? This, this same machinery works for non-convex functions as well. And so, in fact, one of these examples that we've already done, so remember I um, checked that the KKT conditions actually held uh, for the minimizer um, 
on this constraint problem where the minimizers were either at you know, this intersection of the line and the parabola or this intersection of the line and the parabola. Um, and I sort of glossed over the fact that this is a non-convex set, right? So you, you can, um, this green region here uh, is a non-convex set. You can put uh, a point on either side of this parabola and draw a chord through it, uh, and that chord goes outside of the set. So it's a non-convex set. Uh, it's got this kink in it, but kind of weirdly, the KKT condition still held here, and we could check that earlier. So the reason for that is that at these minimizing points, right? So at the points uh, on this uh, on this region here, uh, uh, the gradients of G, so the gradient uh, of my blue line and the gradient of my uh, uh, of the tangent, of the gradient of my um, parabola at this point are linearly independent and the same down here. So they're both regular points, and so KKT actually still holds. So that was actually why uh, why this uh, why this works, and it's a, it's an example of KKT holding um, in a, actually a broader class of problems than what we've focused on. Um, so that's you know, that's an important um, point for you to keep in keep in mind. Is that it's actually a very powerful theorem. Last one. Um, so this is a special case uh, of KKT. Uh, so for quadratic programs, so we mentioned this just because quadratic programs are super common. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, often uh, you're trying to minimize quadratic functions, right? So any sort of uh, least squares uh, error, if you're trying to, you know, uh, minimize some sort of least squares error uh, function, uh, and that typically looks like a quadratic. Uh, so it's a you know, very common uh, class of functions. We talked about it a lot with conjugate gradients. Uh, if you were trying to minimize that subject to some constraints, so we'll just look at um, uh, linear constraints here, um, then that's a special case of KKT. So we should go through and look what, what this looks like. So KKT, here's KKT1. It actually looks like, um, well, yeah, it looks like here's my gradient, uh, here's my gradient of f. Uh, and here are my uh, um, uh, my terms specifying the you know Lagrange multipliers uh, multiplying by all of these constraints, and it actually looks like just um, a set of linear equations where I've got some particular matrices A and A, uh, a and A E Q. Uh, what are they? Well, they come from the gradients of uh, nonlinear and linear um, uh, non and and uh, these different types of um, different types of constraints here. Oh, sorry, um, or rather my um, uh, equality, you know, if I have equality and inequality uh, constraints, that's what the EQ stands for. Um, yeah, so you can cast this KKT in, um, uh, uh, in linear algebra terms uh, for quadratic programs. Uh, if we only have equality constraints here, uh, so if we just limit our case, uh, uh, limit to, you know, uh, I'm calling these a, you know, all of these lambdas zero. Uh, so we only have the mu's that we've got to figure out. This whole expression here, um, you can write as a big system uh, of linear equations. So actually, in that case, uh, to solve the KKT conditions, to find the minimizer, you can just solve a big old AX equals B uh, for this. So this is quadratic, minimizing quadratic functions subject to a set of equality constraints you can just cast uh, as something that you can use a backslash b on in MATLAB, which is great. Um, it's not that easy in practice, uh, I should say, uh, because this system of equations here can be giant, right? If you have a problem that's got lots and lots of constraints, and if it's a high dimensional problem, then this, can, this is an absolutely massive uh, matrix equation. So it's, you know, n plus p, uh, by n plus p, where you know uh, n's the dimension of x and p is the number of constraints that you've got there, and that can be very badly conditioned. So you know, um, very can be a very ill-conditioned problem. So it can be very very difficult um, to solve this. So you still actually need to use uh, numerical algorithms. So um, uh, things like the optimization algorithms that can be applied to linear algebra, con conjugate gradients, things like this. Um, for solving, uh, even for solving problems like this. So, um, you know, formally you can write down the solutions very, very nicely, and it's nice compact form. Uh, in practice, uh, it can be harder to solve. Um, so that's just a little overview, just to um, remind you, or just to, um, so that you keep in mind, uh, that KKT uh, is an incredibly powerful 
uh, set of tools uh, and all of these, many of these different types of uh, problems that are of interest to look at, so quadratic programs, um, uh, even non-convex problems, you can apply KKT to uh, and give you a framework for actually finding those solutions.